Sergeant and Mrs. Smith, you are going to love this house. Is that a tub in the kitchen? There's no field manual for finding the right home. But when you do, USAA Homeowners Insurance can help protect it the right way. Restrictions apply. You're listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. And welcome to the Sonic Society, the world's largest and longest running showcase of modern audio drama. I'm Jack Ward, here with David Alt, and this week I'm nearly beside myself. I'm one of those people who adores Christmas tales. <laughs> Well, well, when I can. And our first week before the great day, we have a lovely first two episodes of a grand adventure. Bah humbug. Yes, right you are, Jack, you jolly old elf you. Uh, This week we have Tinseltown. After making a wish on the Christmas star, Holly finds herself popping in and out of Tinseltown, a magical place where it's Christmas every day. And my wish comes true, as it all begins right here. On the Sonic Society. Hey, Tinseltonians, Ad Guy here. This podcast is brought to you by Podchaser. Want to discover more amazing podcasts to listen to this holiday season? Podchaser's got you covered. Podchaser is the ultimate website for finding podcasts. You can check out ratings and reviews, credits, browse playlists, and even follow friends to see what they're listening to. It's 100% free with no app to download. Just go to podchaser.com slash welcome to Tinseltown to get started. Podchaser is a podcast listener's best friend. That's podchaser.com slash welcome to Tinseltown. Enjoy. There's a certain feeling in the air this time of year. It's like... like magic. Everywhere you look could be a picture on a Christmas card. The lights, the snow, the families in matching sweaters. (laughs) It's my favorite time of year, I can tell you that right now. And this Christmas is shaping up to be a magical one too. Almost as magical as Holly's. Wait, what? You... You haven't heard about Holly's Christmas. Well, buckle in because I have a story for you. Our story actually begins last year. On Christmas Eve, Holly's house was full of friends and family, laughing, eating, exchanging gifts. It was a perfect night. The snow had cleared, and Holly and her grandmother were sitting beside the hearth, looking at the stars through the window. All right, are you ready? What's that one called, Holly? Ursa Major. And that one? Beetlejuice. No, no. Cassiopeia. Right again. I can't believe how many of these you know. Well, I did skip the fourth grade, you know. Hey, was that a shooting star? That wasn't just a shooting star. That was the Christmas star. Make a wish. Hmm. Let me think. Ah, I know. I wish it could be Christmas every day. Chapter 1. Through the Archway A lot has happened since last Christmas. Lost teeth, birthday parties summer camp. So it shouldn't come as a surprise when I tell you that Holly had forgotten the wish she'd made last year and had a new one in mind. I wish we could be spending Christmas in Florida like Madison's family. You know, Madison from my class? Well, her parents are taking her to Orlando, and they're going to go to Disney, and they're actually going to be there on Christmas Day with the fireworks and everything. But instead, we're stuck here. Same old Christmas. Grandma's not even coming. We've been over this, Holly. Not this year. Why not? If it's because you turned the spare room into an office, she can sleep in Jeremy's bed and Jeremy can sleep in the snow fort in the backyard. Hey, Mom! Holly, 
I just don't get why she came last year, but she can't this year. Is she busy performing her music or something? Sometimes these things just don't work out, okay? Holly could tell her mother was upset for some reason. But then again, her mom was always a little cranky at this time of year. Maybe some decorations would help. After all, it was well into December. And aside from the single strand of lights on the house, you could barely tell what time of year it was. So up, up, up into the attic went Holly to retrieve a very special box. Now, where did they... Ah, here they are. All neat and... <coughs> dusty. Very, very dusty. She began digging through the decorations. She found all of her favorites. The paw-shaped stocking for the dog. The Christmas Village miniatures. The off-brand blow-up reindeer with the glowing green nose. Wait. What's this? It was a small box. And when Holly blew the dust away, it shined and sparkled. She was confused. The dust made it seem pretty old... But the box looked almost brand new. Inside was a tin soldier ornament with glossy black boots, a tall, shiny helmet, and a left arm that was ever so slightly crooked. It wasn't what she was looking for, but it looked special. So she carefully packed it away and made a mental note to ask her mom about it later. Then she spotted what she had come up for, a box labeled Christmas Mugs. <laughs> the simplest decoration of all. You just have to put them up in the cupboard and BAM! Next time you have a craving for hot cocoa, a festive mug would instantly get you in the holiday mood. And there was one in particular that was her mother's favorite. It has a picture of a toad in a Santa hat. And in big green letters, it says, Mistletoad. Just need, just need to reach all the way to the bottom for mom's mug. Ooh. <gasps> Holly fell head first into the box, and where she was expecting to hear the clinking of mugs, instead, she heard air whooshing past her ears as she fell deeper and deeper and deeper into the box. Until finally... Oh. Is this... snow? Now, any other child would have been scared, but not Holly. She was at the end of a street in a small village covered in snow. Cozy storefronts lined the cobbled road, and gas street lamps flickered all along the way. A wreath hung on every one. At the top of the street, a giant, glowing Christmas tree sat in a large town square. And beyond that was a huge castle. And in front of Holly stood a large candy cane with a name tag that read... Cornelius. Hello! Welcome to Tinseltown! Huh, weird. It's stopped snowing. Strange. No. Oh, oh, oh! I'm sorry. My name is Cornelius. Uh, what? What? What kind of decoration are you? I'm not a decoration? Oh, of course, of course. So, some sort of, uh, toy then? No? Wait. Woodland? Woodland creature? Oddly, oddly dressed elf, are you? You're not a, you're not a ham. You're not a ham, are you? Um, I'm Holly. I'm eight years old, and I got to skip the fourth grade, and I'm a human. What is this place? A Christmas land, of course. The place where it's Christmas every day. But more specifically, we are in Tinseltown, my hometown, home of the Tinsel. Go Yetis! Woo! Sorry. It, it's been a while since a human has come through. I can't quite remember the protocol. That's okay. Well, it was really nice to meet you, Cornelius, but I really got to go home. All right. We'll just uh, wait until it starts snowing in the archway and you can go on through. And how long does that take? Because it's not snowing in there now. Um, well, I uh, honestly, it's, um, eh, it's never stopped before. What? So. Cornelius! That can't be good. Lucky for us, I've watched a lot of videos about fixing things, so it shouldn't be too hard. I just watched one about fixing our washing machine, so I just need to find the valve and um, shut off the water. And, uh, okay, I don't think that's going to help us here. They stood for a moment, confused. 
The archway towered over them made of bricks of glowing ice. Like the box in the attic, it was old and worn, but still sparkled in the daylight. Before too long, a small, grouchy-looking elf, wearing a sweater covered in music notes, came huffing and puffing down the street. What is the meaning of this? I was just in rehearsal with the snowman choir when one of them tells me to look out the window because the archway isn't working? Cornelius, I got you this job out of the goodness of my heart. Don't tell me that you've already found some way of ruining it! Uh, uh, hello, conductor. This is Holly, the, um, human. A human? How? What? You... Ma'am, are you not a resident of Christmasland? You cannot be here. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> but... Luckily, in addition to being the choir conductor, I am also a volunteer joy and peacekeeper. A what? Oh, for eggnog's sake, it's like a sheriff. Uh, well, maybe you should just say sheriff from now on, so it's not so confusing. Ugh, stop trying to distract me. As a joy and peacekeeper, I am taking both of you in for questioning. I told you, I don't know what's going on here. Conductor, aren't you supposed to be in rehearsal? Yeti twins, what's happening here? Oh yeah, ma'am. They stormed out of there right quick. They keep cutting into our practice time with their figure skating. It's not cool. Hey, uh, the, the queen's coming. She'll know what to do. Hey, queen, over here! No, absolutely not. I can deal with this on my own. I command you to come with me. The conductor led them away from the archway to the next street. It looked like a movie set. Reindeer strolled from shop to shop, loaded down with shopping bags. There were Christmas lights on every storefront, and perfect curls of smoke rose from every chimney. The smell of peppermint filled the air, but the conductor was pushing past all of that, walking behind Cornelius and Holly, poking them with an icicle. Hey, no, Hello, wait, conductor! What are you doing? Keep oh. moving. So, Cornelius, Tinseltown, is this where Santa lives? Uh... Santa lives at the North Pole, so... Oh, duh. But he does have a timeshare here. I knew it! I said shh! They rounded the corner to another, quieter street lined with homes. The conductor led them into a small cottage. Right this way. To the Joy and Peacekeeper's interrogation room. Um, this just looks like a dining room in someone's house. Your house, right? No, this is the Joy and Peacekeeper's interrogation room, like I said. Then why is there a picture of you on vacation hanging on the wall? And is that you with... Like oh my goodness, that's your mom. It is mom. I know, I know her. I saw her. Enough! I am supposed to be the one interrogating you. Here are the facts. One minute, the archway is working. And the next, nothing. Not only that, but this intruder also showed up unannounced. Cornelius, Holly, what have you done? Well, it's like I was trying to tell you. One second I was at home, the next second I was falling, and then it was here. Lies! She's not lying, Conductor. That's all there is to it. People don't just appear out of thin air. I mean, when they come through the archway, they... They, li they literally do, so... Oh! I know something fishy is going on here. I mean, it never stopped snowing here. Till now, she's got to be behind this. I'm not, I promise. Oh, I will get to the bottom of this. And I swear on my joy in Peacekeeper's badge that I will be the one to restore Christmasland to its traditional holiday glory. What is that sound? Now announcing Her Majesty, the Queen of Christmas Land! Four elves in uniforms burst through the door, followed by the Queen, a polar bear, and the most elegant polar bear Holly had ever seen. She wore a deep red robe and a golden crown. Conductor, what is the meaning of this? I swear I saw you in the street just a moment ago. Oh, holy sprinkles. Is this a guest? Tell me, my dear, what is your name? Uh, Holly. Er, uh, uh, Holly, your highness. Please, please, please don't eat me. Holly, you have a familiar look about you, my dear. Have we met before? Hmm. Well, I was a mouse in the third grade pageant. Did you see that? No, I'm afraid not. Don't know what to tell you then. Well, I digress. 
Conductor, you cannot just detain people. The Christmas Council will take care of that. So then what are the Joy and Peacekeepers for? Keeping an eye out for litterbugs, helping sweet old penguins cross the street, that kind of thing. But definitely not detaining people. <laughs> What's the point of... What was that? Nothing, Your Highness. Right you are, Conductor. Now, Holly and Cornelius, you can come with me. And Conductor, please, no more hostages. Yes, Your Highness. The Queen led Holly and Cornelius back to the town square, which was packed with people who had gathered to admire the tree. Holly glanced up at the castle, studying the beautiful, ornate stained glass windows. Hey, Cornelius, the reindeer in that stained glass window kind of looks like my dog. And the woman in that one with the Christmas pageant, she looks just like my grandma. Whoa, and the abominable snowman in that huge one looks exactly like my brother. They're really amazing, aren't they? Speaking of amazing, take a look at that tree. It's it's incredible, your majesty. Every year you just out to yourself. It is, isn't it? Some of my best work yet, if I do say so myself. Check out that star. Star. Star? Star! Wait, Cornelius, your majesty, I made a wish on the Christmas star. I wished for Christmas every day. Do you think that could be why I fell through the archway? Perhaps. Wish magic is a tricky thing. Even I only know a bit about it, and I'm considered something of an expert on the topic. But if the star you wished upon really was the Christmas star, well... Out of my way... Cut that out right now. The Christmas star is a myth, and you know it. Excuse me, sir, but please do not address the queen like that. Okay, but it is time for the human to leave. I've just come from the archway, and it's finally working again, so she needs to go before anything else goes wrong. Oh, don't listen to him, Holly. None of this is your fault. I'm sure your being here is just a fluke. You'll pass back through that archway. Your life will go back to normal. And so will ours. It's been a pleasure to meet you, though. But I think I hear your mother calling. Holly! Holly, where are you? Holly had a million questions for the queen, but she knew it was time to leave. She looked to the archway, where snow was now swirling inside. Merry Christmas, Holly! Merry Christmas! And goodbye, Holly the human. Merry Christmas! Hello, boxes. Hello, decorations. Hello. (coughs) Dust. Holly, you need any help up there? No. Got it, Mom. I'm sorry, I was up there for so long, it took forever to find what I was looking for. And then I got distracted, and I got sucked in, and then there was this big candy cane, and there was... (laughs) Holly, what an imagination you have. I used to be just like you. Hey! It's not just my imagination. This really happened. You were only up there two minutes, maybe three tops. Is everything okay? What are you hiding behind your back? I just thought maybe it might make you feel better to have some hot cocoa from our favorite Christmas mugs. Yes, please. I'll heat up the stove. And so they sat, mother and daughter, sipping hot cocoa while snow began to fall outside. Mom, maybe we could go get a tree tomorrow? That sounds like a great idea, honey. Can we put that tin soldier ornament on it? Tin soldier? Yeah, with the glossy black boots, the tall shiny helmet, and the crooked left arm. We don't use that one, Holly. But why not? Because we don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just old. Why don't you go find your brother? I think he wanted some help making his card to mail to Grandma. And with the events of the day slipping from her mind, Holly and Jeremy got to work, cutting up Christmas catalogs to decorate their cards for their grandmother. But... Up in the attic, Holly's mother was all alone, sitting cross-legged on the floor with a small, shiny box in her lap. A box that had earlier that day been covered in dust. It housed the tin soldier ornament with glossy black boots, a tall, shiny helmet, and a left arm that was ever so slightly crooked. She turned the tin soldier ornament over, revealing the logo on the back. Made in the USA by the Remington Toy Company. And meanwhile, in Christmasland. 
Conductor, what business do you bring before the Christmas Council today? Council Snowman Frost, a human appeared in Christmasland today, and strange things started happening. I'd bet the last treat in my advent calendar that she'll be back, and things are only going to get worse for us. Council Snowman Frost, Jackie, please. Christmas land could be ruined forever. Interesting. And what do you propose we do about it? I have some ideas. But the conductor wasn't the only person wondering what to do next. Back in the town square, the queen was standing in front of the Christmas tree, staring at a small ornament. Why was Holly sent here? What is happening in the human world? Oh, Remington, please wake up. I need to get to the bottom of this. That ornament was a small tin soldier with glossy black boots, a tall shiny helmet, and a slightly crooked left arm. Thank you so much for listening to Welcome to Tinseltown. The story doesn't end here, though. Continue on to the next episode to find out what's in store. Tinseltonians, thank you so much for tuning in. To get a little sentimental, we've worked very hard on this series, and we really hope we brought a little bit of joy to your holiday season. So if you liked what you heard, if you felt a little bit of that Christmas magic, it would mean the world to us if you shared this podcast with a friend or family member. Just let them know we exist, and you'll make our Christmas. We want to make a second season, and you can help us make that happen by spreading the word. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Hey Tinseltown. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Welcome to Tinseltown is a Triangle Content production. Our executive producer is Dave Kiney. We were written and directed by Adam Ganong and Jenna Noor, with music and audio production by Adam Ganong. Our cast includes Jenna Noor, Adam Ganong, Alex Ryu, Charisse Lebrun, Jean-Michel Clich, Kira Chisholm, Hannah Blizzard, and Jake Knorr. With additional voices by Dave Kiney, Daniel Ganong, Philip Hall, and Wayne Knorr. Alex Ryu was our script editor, with additional writing by Dave Kiney and additional music by Ken Miller. Special thanks to Dorothy Kiney, Wayne and Susan Knorr, and Adam Raymunda. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Hey, Tinseltonians, Ad Guy here. This podcast is brought to you by Podchaser. Want to discover more amazing podcasts to listen to this holiday season? Podchaser's got you covered. Podchaser is the ultimate website for finding podcasts. You can check out ratings and reviews, credits, browse playlists, and even follow friends to see what they're listening to. It's 100% free with no app to download. Just go to podchaser.com slash welcome to Tinseltown to get started. Podchaser is a podcast listener's best friend. That's podchaser.com slash welcome to Tinseltown. Enjoy. Chapter 2 A Friend in Need. There are many traditional Christmas decorations lights, stockings, gingerbread houses, the list goes on. But none are quite as significant as the Christmas tree. Imagine it in the corner of the living room, in the front window, in a busy town square. Decked out in ornaments and twinkling lights, filling the house with a glow that just says Christmas. Whether it be real, artificial, tall, short, skinny, it doesn't matter. (laughs) Well, unless you are Holly. It's got to be 12 feet tall and 8 feet across, and I'm going to decorate every inch of it. (laughs) Dear, you know we can't fit a 12-foot tree in our house. Just cut a hole in the ceiling. Hey, 
but my room's over the living room. It's for Christmas, Jeremy. Mom. Jeremy, honey, don't worry. No one's cutting a hole in your floor. Hey, turn it up. It's Grandma's song on the radio. Turn it up. Grace, could we just let it play? No need to get too involved in what's on the radio. We're practically there. But, Mom... Said no, Holly. Defeated, Holly dropped the subject. What? Her spirits were lifted just a moment later when she saw her favorite sign arching over the road. It read, Morrison and Sons Christmas Tree Farm and Fishing Tackle. We're here. We're here. You kids ready to get some fishing tackle? Dad! The pickings, as Holly would call them, were slim. And the trees were as slim as the pickings. This one doesn't have any needles? Morrison, is this some kind of joke? No, oh, they're on there. Look closer. Oh, three whole needles. Two whole needles. Yeah, tough season for balsam furs, I'm afraid. I gave them all the TLC I could, but what happens happens, I suppose. The family picked out the best one they could find. A thin but tall fur with a few gaps here and there. Well, more than a few. Holly just couldn't accept it. She had her heart set on a massive tree. So, she went looking for the real trees. She rounded the corner of Mr. Morrison's shed, but suddenly... She found herself falling, and falling, and falling, and then... It was better than last time. Mary! Holly the human! How, how can this be? You're back! Yep, here I am. Hi, Cornelius. Holly turned to look at the archway. Not one snowflake. Well, I guess they won't be leaving till that starts back up again. Uh, look on the bright side! I haven't seen the conductor anywhere today, so he, he must be out of town! Well, I'm glad to hear that grouch isn't around. So, what's the plan here? As long as I'm stuck here, I might as well help out. What do you need me to do? Well, my laundry's been piling up, so... Now, what am I talking about? Okay, uh, until the party starts up, we gotta have some fun, right? Um... Ooh, do you like Christmas trees? <laughs> do I? Yeah. Do you? Do you like... I, I, don't, I thought it was clear. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes I do. Oh, Then boy, do I have a surprise for you. So, off they went. They trapezed to the village, past the already impressive Christmas tree in the town square, which Cornelius assured Holly was not the surprise. But, as they climbed the hill... Christmas trees are tall and green. Other trees are just obscene. Christmas trees are tall and green. Oh, I should have known the conductor would be here. He's been grumpier than a sheep that got only sweaters for Christmas. Let's just go around. Wait! You can't go in there. That place is filled with monstrosities. Exciting. Like gargoyles or statues or... No, not like that. Those trees. Those abominations. Those... I'm sorry. I'm out of breath. Whew. Clara has been growing trees that are not trees. What's wrong with them? They aren't traditional, and therefore they are bad. Just look at them! The conductor motioned towards the field. But the scene was similar to that of Morrison and Sons. Holly counted... Five scraggly trees dotting the open countryside. Oh, yes. Very right you are, Conductor. Look at all those invisible trees. A disgrace. Well, of course she's taken all the trees inside since I started showing up here to protest. Right. In that little shack out there. Yes. I mean, I didn't see her do it, but I know she's hiding them from me. But oh, they are hideous. Pink trees, red trees, polka dot trees... One of them was singing. A singing tree! Sure, Conductor. Cornelius, want to go take a look? 
anything to get away from him. I heard that! Oh, sorry. All right, here we are. And let's just give a little knock a -roo. Conductor, I have a Christmas cracker and I'm not afraid to use it. Oh, oh Cornelius, what a pleasant surprise. And who's this? I'm Holly. Welcome, Holly. Won't you both come in? Now, as you may know, some things are not as they appear. Just like the old saying about good things and small packages, Clara's shack was definitely a good thing. This place is huge! It goes on forever. And look at all these trees. Red, purple, yellow. And there are polka dot ones. Yes, my pride and joy! I just wish they could bring joy to the others too, but... The conductor has been scaring everyone away, so I had to move them all in here. How long has he been out there? I mean, he's always complained about my trees for being... <clears throat> non-traditional, as he says. But this protest, this is new. It all started when Mr. and Mrs. Gingerbread brought their tree. He noticed that it was plaid, and it just was sent him really over the edge for some reason. He's been extra grumpy lately. Well... That might be my fault. He likes me about as much as a reindeer likes a snowstorm on Christmas Eve. You can say that again. But don't blame yourself, Holly. He's just a grouch. Still, I feel bad that you haven't been able to share your trees with everyone. Hey, maybe we can help you. I really don't know what could be done, Holly. With that whole spectacle out there, people have just stopped coming. But we could go to them. Go to them? Like, sell trees door to door? Not exactly. We can just bring trees into the town square and sell them there. Hey, that, that could work. We just need some way to get them there. Well, I might have just the thing. Maggie, you know Maggie, the sleigh builder. Wait till you see what she has fixed up for me. Whoa! Check out the sleigh! Cool details! Red and green racing stripes! Wrapping paper upholstery! Oh, the sleigh has it all! Isn't it great? Holly and Cornelius worked together to load the sleigh up with trees, while Clara hooked a pair of reindeer to the front. And with a snap of the reins, they were off toward the gate. But as they approached, something was blocking the way. Whoa, girl, slow down! What have we here? Conductor, what are you doing? I cannot let you take these trees one inch further. Things have been getting out of hand around here, and I've had enough. That's why I've tied myself to your gate with these licorice laces. Good luck getting anywhere now. A huge grin spread across Clara's face as she leaned forward to pat her reindeer team on the back. Ready? Let's show them what we can do. Cornelius, Holly, hold on! Whoa! Clara let the reins go slack, and her reindeer team charged toward the conductor. But just before they were about to collide, the reindeer took off. They were flying. They zoomed up and over the gate, over the conductor, and touched back down softly on the other side. As they entered Tinseltown, people were already talking. But it seems like maybe the conductor had gotten to them already. Wait, aren't those Clara's trees? You know, I was talking to the conductor, you know, the conductor, and he said... What was so wrong with plain old green trees anyway? I've always liked the way they look. I just can't see how a singing tree would fit in with our decor. Am I right, dear? So noisy, so boisterous, so loud. By the time the sleigh pulled up next to the tree in the town square, quite a crowd had gathered, but not in a good way. They were somewhere between a concerned citizens group and a full-on angry mob. What's the meaning of this? Get those out of here! Tinseltown doesn't need these trees. Ugh, unbelievable! I gotta do something to help. Wait, 
I know. Tinseltonians! We have heard your concerns, but I assure you, there is nothing to worry about. You may have heard the conductor saying some not-so-nice things about Clara and her trees, but why don't you make up your minds for yourselves? Clara has worked so hard to get these trees ready for you. And besides, Christmas is a time for joy, for decorations, for going all out. So why not put up a lime green tree, or a purple glittery tree, or even a singing tree? You know, the girl's got a point. Besides, I see a silver one in there that would match my outer space-themed decorations perfectly. And whoa! Is that a yellow one? I mean, yellow is my favorite color. And does this one? Oh my goodness, this one smells just like freshly baked gingerbread. Wow! Unbelievable! In no time at all, the only thing left in the sleigh was a pile of multicolored pine needles. Lara was beaming. Well, I'll be. I couldn't have done it without you guys. Holly, you are truly a great saleswoman, and both of you are great friends. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, Cornelius, our work here is done. As long as I'm in Tinseltown, we might as well go see if the Queen has any more information about wish magic to share with us. Wish magic, you say? I mean, tree magic is definitely my speciality, but I dabble in some of the other mystical arts. What do you need to know? Well, I'm pretty sure that wish magic is the whole reason why I'm here. I made a wish on the Christmas star last year, and now this year I've been popping in and out of Christmas land. Oh, it's been ages since I've heard any good Christmas star talk. I do know a little bit about her wish magic. It's the royal icing that holds Christmas land together. Wait, the Christmas star is a lady? Well, if you believe the stories, the legends say all kinds of things about what the star does and doesn't look like. But most recently, I've heard that the Christmas star has taken the shape of a woman in a beautiful, ornate dress. Huh. Interesting. Do you think the Christmas star is real? Well, I've never seen her. But I believe in her. Me too. Thanks so much, Clara. I'll be sure to keep all that in mind. My pleasure. And so, Holly and Cornelius made their way back to town. Clara's amazing trees glimmered inside every home they passed as they walked. As they approached the town square, Holly could hear her mother on the other side of the archway. Holly, get back here where I can see you. That's my mom. Hey, it's snowing in the archway again. Excellent. Well, at this point, I dare say I'll be seeing you again, Holly the human. Don't worry, though. I'm going to talk to the queen right away. We'll figure out something. We can't have you getting stuck here. Bye. See you later, Cornelius. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> That's way better when you're expecting it. I don't know, David. Maybe we should wait to see what they have at the farmer's market tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, that might not be the worst idea in the world. No! This tree is fine. It's more than fine. Mr. Morrison worked hard to grow it for us. And besides, Christmas trees don't all need to be tall and green. This one has tons of sturdy branches to hang all our ornaments. Yeah, and in that big hole at the bottom, Santa can pile up all the gifts for me. Ahem. And Holly. The kids seem to like it, Grace. Think we should go for it? Please, Mom. Please. Oh, all right. You know what? You can take it. Free of charge. Get it loaded on the car. Yay! Yay! <laughs> they took the tree home and spent the whole evening decorating it, loading it with every ornament they owned to fill in all the gaps and holes. Well, almost every ornament. Holly just couldn't take her mind off that tin soldier, but she never saw her mother take it out. Well, after Holly and her brother were asleep, and their dad was watching TV. Holly's mother crept quietly up to the attic. She carried down the tin soldier and hung it on the tree near the back, but still visible if you knew where to look. She smiled, reaching out to touch Remington's crooked arm one last time before going 
to wrap some presents. Thank you so much for listening to Welcome to Tinseltown. The story doesn't end here, though. Continue on to the next episode to find out what's in store. Tinseltonians, thank you so much for tuning in. To get a little sentimental, we've worked very hard on this series, and we really hope we brought a little bit of joy to your holiday season. So if you liked what you heard, if you felt a little bit of that Christmas magic, it would mean the world to us if you shared this podcast with a friend or family member. Just let them know we exist, and you'll make our Christmas. We want to make a second season, and you can help us make that happen by spreading the word. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Hey Tinseltown. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Welcome to Tinseltown is a Triangle Content production. Our executive producer is Dave Kiney. We were written and directed by Adam Ganong and Jenna Noor with music and audio production by Adam Ganong. Our cast includes Jenna Noor, Adam Ganong, Alex Ryu, Charisse Lebrun, Jean-Michel Clich, Kira Chisholm, Hannah Blizzard, and Jake Knorr, with additional voices by Dave Kiney, Daniel Ganong, Philip Hall, and Wayne Knorr. Alex Ryu was our script editor, with additional writing by Dave Kiney and additional music by Ken Miller. Special thanks to Dorothy Kiney, Wayne and Susan Knorr, and Adam Raimunda. Frohlich Weihnachten! Hey, Tinseltonians, Ad Guy here. This episode is brought to you by Audible. Audible is celebrating this holiday season by giving listeners of Welcome to Tinseltown a free audiobook. Audible has over 180,000 audiobooks to choose from. But as your friendly neighborhood faceless ad guy, I recommend you pick up A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. It's a Christmas classic for a reason, and they have a great one narrated by the legendary Tim Curry. Just head to audibletrial.com slash tinseltown and sign up for a free 30-day trial to get your free audiobook. There's no obligation, you can cancel at any time, and the book is yours to keep. If you're under 13, ask a parent or guardian to help. Support the show and get a free audiobook at audibletrial.com slash tinseltown. And that's this week's show. Please check the show notes for links for Tinseltown on sonicsociety.org. Maybe we can convince that team to make more. Mm. Next Mm -hmm. week we land on Boxing Day, but the holiday adventures continue with an awesome two parts of the pulp space adventures of Mrs. Claus. Yeah, it's about time she had some fun as well. Merry Christmas to you and yours, David. And happy Christmas to your family as well, Jack. And to all a good night, or rather morning. See you next week, (laughs) folks. Take care. Bye for now. The Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. Hey Tinseltonians, you love Welcome to Tinseltown and now you can show it. Head to the website tinseltown.show slash store and browse awesome Welcome to Tinseltown apparel and merchandise including shirts, blankets, and more. Get your Welcome to Tinseltown gear today. It supports the show, makes a great gift or stocking stuffer this Christmas. And if you're under 13, ask a parent or guardian to help out. Again, that's tinseltown.show slash store. Hiya, kids. This is Stinky the Elf coming to you from the North Pole. You know, Santa Claus's workshop, right? 
Well, I've been asked to convey a special message to you that my boss, Santa Claus, that's right, the jolly old fat guy in the red suit, wants to hear from all the little boys and girls out there. Here's an opportunity to tell him your Christmas list and any other special holiday message you got. And on Fridays, starting the day after Thanksgiving, my boss will read your message out loud on a new podcast called Santa's Inbox, exclusively on the Mutual Network. He'll mention your first name only, plus the town you're from, and then read your email out loud so everybody can hear it. Ain't that exciting? Yeah, Sandy told me that he used to read letters from kids on the radio back in the day, but I told him, I'm only 300 years old. I can't remember that far back. <laughs> okay, what else? Oh, yeah, this offer is open to anybody. Kids, grown-ups, the young at heart, anybody who wants to send a special message or a dedication to anybody else. So anyways, start sending Santa Claus your emails now to santas.xmas.inbox at gmail.com. That's S-A-N-T-A-S dot X-M-A-S dot I-N-B-O-X at gmail.com. Kids, please ask your folks to send your email for you.